Hi again, it's Michelle Myers and I am here with Beachbody Basics number three and it goes right along with number two, which was to share the product with two new people every single day. So this one is follow up with the people that you shared with yesterday. So this is where organization and tracking is really going to come into play. So I'm not going to be one of those people and tell you how you have to be organized, use this planner, use this app, whatever. Whatever works for you, do it. But you've got to be writing down who you're talking to so it saves you time the next day when you have to follow up. Because no matter if you think that you're going to remember everything, you probably won't. You're going to let somebody fall through the cracks. You're going to remember when it's too late. You're going to whatever. So make sure that you're writing these things down. So when I share with somebody on that day, here's what I make sure that I keep track of. Obviously, I keep track of who they are, their name. I keep track of how we talked. Was it Twitter? Was it Instagram? Was it Facebook? Was it email? Was it in person? You know, what contact information do I have for that person? So if it was Instagram, what's their username? If it was on the phone, what's their phone number? To where I am keeping track of those things to where when I go to follow up with them, it's really mm -hmm. simple. It's easy for me because I go, oh, it was Instagram. Here's your username. I'm going to go back and I'm going to follow up with her on that. Or here's her email address. I'm going to go back and I'm going to follow up with that. So you need to know who they were, how you talked, what you talked about, and then when you follow up, what should you follow up about? Did you send them a video about Shakeology? Did you get their why on why they're interested in getting more healthy and fit? How? Are, what's your next step? When you contact them, what are you going to do? Because it's going to take you about 20 extra seconds to do that after you've talked to them the first time, and it's probably going to save you 20 minutes of searching the next day to where you're going, okay, were they on my personal Facebook page or were they on my public page? Were they in my email? email inbox or were they in my Facebook inbox? Like you're not going to have to worry about that because it's going to be written down there for you. So know how you're supposed to follow up. Know what you've told them that you're going to do. Hey, I'm going to call and I'm going to check in with you tomorrow and I'm going to see what you thought about that video that I sent you about Shakeology. So you, you know when you talk to them, hey, did you get a chance to watch that video I sent you about Shakeology? Wasn't it awesome? What were some of your key takeaways from watching it? You're you already have your what you're supposed to say. So follow-ups really shouldn't take you that long because you've already written down for yourself what you're going to do when you talk to them about the next day. So here's a note about follow-ups. Because if you continue to chase people, if you continue to follow up with them, when really you're just kind of stalking them, a few things are going to happen. They are going to start to lose confidence because they are going to be like, dude, she has sent me messages seven days in a row because I asked one question about Shakeology. I'm kind of thinking that she can't sell this stuff to anybody. Or I'm not thinking that this stuff really doesn't work. So the more you chase people, the more you're actually going to crush their confidence in what you do. So my rule on following up, because sometimes if a person doesn't message back, it means that now's not a good time. Or they know that they can't spend that kind of money because their car broke down or tuition is due or whatever. They've got something and so now is not the best time. So what I do is if I've talked to somebody, we've chatted, I've gotten you know some basic mm -hmm. information from them about what they're interested in, then I am going to contact that person with my one follow-up and then I might follow up with them again the next day. I'm going to follow up with them again like you know, so 24, 48 hours later. And then after that, if I don't have a response from them, I'm not going to ask again. They know I'm here. They know I care. They have the information that they need. But obviously their answer is at least no for now. And so I'm number one, not going to waste my time in chasing them but I'm also not going to ruin my credibility and just continue to come back for rejection because obviously it's just not the best time. Here is the only exception to that. The only exception is if I have gone through and I have talked to people and I've really gotten a sense of some desperation in their life to where they're on multiple medications or they're a mom 
who has a toddler at home and she's so heavy that she can't get, even get down on the floor to play with her kid. Like there's something really, really, really troubling. And so for that person, I'm going to reach out one more time and I'm going to say something along the lines of, hey, listen, I understand things get busy. I understand, you know, timing. Um, so maybe this is not the best time for you, but I want you to know that I open challenge groups all the time or I'm always going to be here when you decide that you're ready. So if now is not the right time, don't feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to hate you forever if you don't do this right now. I want what's best for you. And so, of course, I want you to join. But if now isn't the best time for you, then I'm going to be here when you're ready. And so sometimes this serves one of two purposes. If somebody has financial trouble and they really just can't commit to the purchase right now, they're going to get a get out of jail free card to where they're going to feel like they can still talk to you when they see you. They're still going to feel like you care about them. They're still going to understand that you're not just looking at them as commission. They're going to understand that you really see them as a person and that you understand their circumstance. So it may qualify as that. Or it may be the kick in the pants that some people need to just buck up and do it. Because Taking ownership of your health and fitness, particularly if this is an area where you've struggled for a really long time, it can be hard to make that commitment. And so maybe they just need that push to really go, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm going to do this. And so don't chase people, but make sure that they understand that you care and make sure that you understand that it's not their job to follow up with you. It's not your, their job because they asked you one question about Shakeology. Um, it's not their job after that to ask a second question. You know, it's your job to say, hey, listen, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the nutrition little stats of Shakeology yesterday. Were there any other questions that you had that I could help you? Here's how it's benefited me. I would love to share more with you if you're still interested. To where that's just, it's a conversation. And so Be Beachbody Basics, number three, follow up with the people that you shared with yesterday. But don't chase them. Don't be a creepo. Just follow up.